वेलकम टू बाइजू सिक्स सेवेंथ एंड एट ग्रेड चैनल I am your teacher Aishwarya and in this particular video we are going to be solving question answers from the chapter the earth in the solar system now this is the first chapter that is there from your geography textbook and if you see we have already covered the concept of this particular chapter in great detail so we see that we have done solar system separately and we've talked about all the other celestial objects in a separate video now if you want to watch the watch these in depth concept chapter explanation the link will be there in the description below you can just click on it and you can watch it but what are we doing in this particular video we are going to be solving all the question answers answers that are there at the end of the chapter and of course we're going to look at each of them in great detail and we'll also understand how you need to write the answer so in case if you get this as a homework or if you get it in the exam you will get a good idea as to how to write it down so without wasting any more time we'll get started so the first question that we have here is a very easy question right so the first question is how does a planet differ from a star Now this kind of question can maybe come for about 2 marks maybe in some cases for 3 marks but when we talk about planets and stars we know that both of them are celestial objects or i can say they are celestial bodies now what are celestial bodies they are natural objects which are present outside the earth atmosphere and in this case when we talk about a star we know that stars are made up of hot gas they are made up of various uh, type of gases that are there and the main thing here is that they emit their own heat and light right so we see that stars emit their own heat and light common example you can give here is the sun but if you want to give one more you can write proxima centauri right but what about a planet how is a planet different different from a star now planets are also celestial bodies but in this case we see that they do not emit their own heat and light right unlike the stars and you can give any example of a planet like earth mars jupiter so on and so forth so there you go you have two points that you can write for a two mark answer but when you are writing this particular question and whenever you get questions that says differ or differentiate or uh, identify the difference between the two always represent it in a tabular form right so make a table like this put planet on one side put star on the other side so you can see that planets are celestial bodies that do not have their own heat and light yes while stars on the other hand are celestial bodies which are very big and hot and they have their own heat and light or they emit their own heat and light now we know that in the case of planets they are lit by the light that is emitted out by the stars so examples you can give here as earth and mercury for planet and example for star you can give the sun So if you get this for two marks, you will get two marks easily for this, right? Easy peasy. Let's move on to the next question. So the second question that we have here is also a very simple question. What is meant by the solar system? Now, when we talk about solar system, right? Firstly, we know that the solar system includes the sun. It includes the eight planets that are there. It includes other celestial bodies like your asteroids, your meteoroids, so on and so forth. Now here you can also add in the point that the solar system gets the name because sol in roman mythology means that sun god right so here we know that in roman mythology it means sun god so in this case it means that it is related to the sun so this is one additional pointer you can add in your answer so when you are writing the answer make sure that you write it in two points not as a paragraph but two different sentences which you bifurcate as points here so you can start off by saying that sol in roman mythology refers to sun god which means solar here refers or it is related to the sun therefore we see that the family around the sun is what we call as the solar system now what does the solar system include it includes your eight planets it includes sat natural satellites like your moon it includes other celestial bodies like asteroids and meteoroids and all of them together form your solar system so if you get this for two marks you will easily score two marks like this so in case if you want to write the answer down you can pause the video right now and you can write it down so that it's easy for you and then we can move on to the next question So quickly moving down to the third question that we have here. Name all the planets according to their distance from the sun. Now this right here is a very easy question that can come for 2 marks and in some cases it will come for 3 marks also, right? Now you can pause this video and you can try writing the answer down by yourself. 
Now, one thing you need to focus in mind is that, of course, you know that here we're talking about all the eight planets, but you need to write it in write it in order. That means starting from the planet which is closest to the sun, and then after that, one after the other, you will have to write it down. So how, what will you start with? We will start with Mercury. So I'm going to write it down at the bottom. We have Mercury, then we have Venus, then we have Earth, we have Mars, yes, then we have Jupiter, then we have Saturn, Uranus, and lastly we have Neptune. So I think I'll write Neptune at the bottom so that you can see. Now the order is very very important because if the order goes missing then it will be difficult for us or you may lose marks because they have clearly said according to the distance from the sun. So based on this when you are writing it you can just write it down one after the other or you can list it down in different different lines but there you go two marks you would have scored very easily for writing all the eight planets. Now some of you must be thinking ma'am should we mention about asteroid belt that is present between Mars and Jupiter. See here they are specific to the eight planets that are part of the solar system so you do not need to mention other celestial bodies. You only need to focus on the eight planets that are a part of our solar system. So there you go easy peasy questions right. So let's quickly move on to the fourth question that we have with us. Why do we call the earth as a unique planet? Now our solar system has eight planets but earth is very unique to us and we call earth as our home and here you need to write down why we do that. So you will get two marks or maybe sometimes this can come for three marks so you will have to write the points based on that. So I will tell you in case if it comes for three marks what are the three things that you will write. Now when we talk about earth what is so special about earth which is not there in other planets. The fact that earth can sustain life or we see that conditions on earth is very favorable for life to survive. Living organisms are there on earth, right? Now what are these conditions? So first and foremost we see that it is neither, we see that in this particular case we see that it is neither too hot nor too cold also, right? So we see that it's neither too hot, neither too cold. Right amount of temperature conditions which makes it very ideal for survival. Now apart from that, we also know that the Earth is called as the blue planet and that's also because of how much water is there. 70% of the Earth's planet is made, Earth is filled with water. So we know that presence of water makes it very important and also air that we have, right? We know that air that is there has a light, has life supporting gases like oxygen, oxygen and we know that even the percentage of gases it has the right mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide which makes it pretty ideal. So here these are four points that you can write down which you can say that these are the reasons why we see that earth is unique because it is able to survive right or we see that because of these reasons life is able to survive on earth. So when you're writing down the answer, you can write down any two to three points. We see that conditions are favorable on earth. We see that it is neither too hot or no, nor too cold. We see that it has water and air, which is essential for our survival. So if you mention down all of these points, you will be able to get good marks. So please make sure you pause this video and you write the answer because this is a very possible and a sure short question that comes from this particular chapter. So if you've written this down, well and good, I'm going to give you three marks for writing such an amazing answer and we will move on to the next question. Question number five is a very easy question. Why is it that we see only one side of the moon at all times? Why is it that we don't see the whole moon but we see it only one side of the moon? Now this is also a very simple question. Now when we talk about the moon, we know that moon is a natural satellite which orbits around the earth, right? Now we know that the moon that is there is not a star. It does not emit its own light. And we know that it's dependent on the light that is emitted by the sun and that's how we are able to see the moon. But we also know that the sun emits or we see that the sun lights up different parts of the moon. Which is also what makes us feel like the moon is constantly changing its shape. And along with that we know that the moon is also orbiting around the sun, I mean or orbiting around the earth. That means it is taking a whole circle around the earth. And in order to move around the earth it takes about 27 days. Which is also the same amount of time it takes to come complete one rotation or one spin around itself which is why as a result of this we end up seeing only one side. So when you write the answer the two main points you need to incorporate is that we always see one side of the moon because the moon moves around the earth right and how many days does it take to move around the earth? 
it takes 27 days. Now, 27 days is the exact amount of time it takes to complete one spin around itself, which is why we end up seeing only one side. Now, this right here, two points you need to mention, 27 days is very important and you need to say that this is the same amount of time it takes to go around the earth and one spin. These two points need to be there, then you will get two marks easily. So now we'll quickly move on to the next question, which is the sixth question. That is a very easy and direct question. What is the universe? Now, when we talk about celestial bodies, we started off with stars, right? And we know that when there are many stars, right? Or when we say that when there are millions of such stars, it forms galaxies. And many, many galaxies that are there end up forming the universe. So we know that millions of galaxies form the universe. And galaxy is nothing but a huge system of billions and billions of stars, dust and gases that are there. So this right here normally maybe come, it might come for one mark because the question just asked us, what is a universe, right? And we know that there's a lot of discovery that is still happening around the same. So of course, here they will not ask you more. If they ask you what is universe, you can just write it down in one or two sentences and you are good to go. So there you go. We're done with the first part of the exercises where you have subjective questions. That means you need to write answers. But the next set of questions are going to be tick the correct answer. Now, this is what we call as multiple choice question. That means you have many options, but you need to identify which is the correct answer. So what I would recommend is that after you see the question, pause the video, try to identify the answer yourself and then you see the explanation. Yes. So let's get started. So the first question that we have here is the planet, which is known as the Earth's twin is which one? Is it Jupiter, is it Saturn, or is it Venus? Now, this right here is a very simple question because we know that the correct answer here is Venus. Because in terms of size and shape, we see that it looks pretty similar to the Earth, which is why we call it as the Earth's twin. Not in terms of conditions, because we know that conditions in Venus and Earth is quite different. But mainly, it has to do with respect to its shape and size. Very good if you've got the answer correctly. Now, let's move on to the next one. Which is the third nearest planet to the Sun? Now, this is very simple. Is it Venus, Earth or Mercury? Now, when you talk about it, if this is your sun, we're talking about which planet is third from the sun. We know that the first planet is Mercury. Then we have Venus, which means that the third planet, which is the third nearest planet to the sun, is nothing but our home planet, which is the Earth. Moving on to the next one. All the planets move around the sun in a dash. Is it in a circular path, in a rectangular path, is it in an elongated path? Now, this is a very important question because I know that most of you tend to have this kind of a misunderstanding. Now, we know that there are these imaginary paths around which the planets move and we call that as the orbit, right? Now, is this orbit circular or is it elongated? Now, we know it is not rectangular, right? Now, uh, unlike many misconceptions we may end up having, it is not a circular path, but rather it is an elongated path, right? So, which is why we see that they go like this. It is elongated. Yes? So, correct answer here is option C. Now, let's move on to the next one. The pole star indicates the direction to the dash. Is it south, north, east? Which one is it? Now, I'm sure that you know the answer to this. You can pause the video, try giving the answer. But I'm sure that you already knew the answer the minute the question popped up on screen. The correct answer here is option B. It indicates the north direction, which is why earlier in the days when there were voyagers who would set out on sea, they would look at the pole star or they would follow the direction of the pole star because they knew that that was the north direction, right? So that's how they used it back when GPS and everything was not there. Moving on to the fifth question that we have and take the correct answer. Asteroids are found between orbits of what and what? Now, asteroids, as we know, they are big rock-like structures that we see. And we know that there's an asteroid belt in itself between two planets. Is it Saturn and Jupiter, Mars and Jupiter, or Earth and Mars? Now, everybody take a minute and give me the answer. But we know this answer. We know that the asteroid belt that is there is actually present between Mars and Jupiter. Not to get confused between Saturn and Jupiter, it is Mars and Jupiter. Now, let's quickly move on to the third set of questions, which is fill in the blanks. Now, this is very simple. These fill in the blanks, each question will come for one mark, right? So, the first question, again, the drill remains the same. So, when you are watching this video, make sure you pause it, try to give the answer by yourself, and then you see what is the correct answer. A group of dash forming various patterns is called a dash. Now, 
it looks very vague right what is the answer to this but your key point here is the fact that we're talking about pattern and whenever you think about pattern you can think about constellations right so we know that a group of stars they form a, you know various different patterns which we call as constellations and we know that there are various examples of constellations that are there one such example is orion and you can think about that as a simple example so whenever you see the word regular pattern various pattern the word pattern comes in you know that we're talking about constellations if you get this right you get one mark for yourself moving on to the next one a huge system of stars is called as a dash now in the previous question itself we had discussed this but when we talk about a huge system of stars which includes billions and billions of stars clouds and dust particles we are talking nothing but about galaxies and we know that the milky way galaxy is the galaxy that our solar system is a part of right so one such example is the milky way galaxy moving on to the next one dash is the closest celestial body to the earth now we know that when we talk about celestial body like i said they are natural objects which are present outside the earth's atmosphere now you must think that the closest celestial body ma'am should be venus or mars because they are the planets but we also know that there are satellites and the closest satellite that is there is nothing but the moon yes and that is also a celestial body and it's a natural uh, satellite that is there which is why in this case the correct answer here is moon moving on to the next one dash is the third nearest planet to the sun now we have solved a very similar question in the previous set of questions in multiple choice question which is why in this case we know the answer the third nearest planet is nothing but the earth next up we have the fifth one planets do not have their own dash and dash now here i will link it back to the first question we solved together where we differentiated between planets and stars and when we spoke about stars i told you that stars that are there emit their own heat and light but what about planets do planets have their own heat and light absolutely not right which is why in this particular case the correct answer here is heat and light planets do not have their own heat and light so there you go just under a few minutes we have solved all the questions together we have actually done a full summary of this chapter so that we are thorough with this now i'm sure that you will never forget and now you know also how to answer right so whenever it comes to writing your own answers you have got an idea now students if you enjoyed this particular video then do let me know in the comments of this video because you see by just six to eight has always got you covered now if you enjoy the kind of videos that we make for all of you do not forget to hit the like button on this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel because we will make sure that whatever you need for your academic classes we will get it covered hoping to see you all soon everybody but up until then take care lots of love and bye bye